Hello everyone, today I thought we'd take a look at this pull request that was merged into Devise five days ago. So it was created two weeks ago and it's made to address the uh, Devise elephant in the room. So for the last year or so, if you've tried to sign up, you've probably run into an issue where your sign up fails. You can then log in because your account is created. Uh, but you run into this nasty error and then there's like this whole workaround with needing to create like a custom override controller and it's just not a pleasant experience and device really hasn't been maintained a lot in the past year so there's been some uh, discussion around like whether or not it's still being supported but uh, i'm here to say it is still being supported and uh, it's actually pretty cool how they set this up so we're going to go through uh, both creating a new app with Devise as well as uh, migrating an existing one because it's pretty simple. Uh, oops, let's go ahead and let's ignore the Unreal Engine that's open there. Uh, so to get started, we're going to do a Rails new video app. And uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and we'll run that. And then uh, in terms of what the legacy upgrade process is going to be like, it's going to be almost identical to what the setup is because of how this has been configured. So thankfully, there's not a lot of uh, housekeeping you have to do. So let's go ahead and let's CD into our video. In here, let's go ahead and let's do a code dot, open this up in VS Code. And then, uh, oops, we'll close this. We'll come over here and then in our gem file, we can scroll down to the bottom and we can do, let me make sure I have my notes open. We can do a gem for device and GitHub colon, and then it's gonna be the heart combo, device, and then the branch is gonna be main. Uh, and then optionally, if you'd like, we can also cover simple form just because it's pretty quick to get set up with the simple form and bootstrap setup. So I do have bootstrap over here. Uh, you're just gonna wanna go over to uh, get bootstrap, find it on Google and uh, click the copy link. You can also add it with like the uh, JS bundling when you do a Rails new app. That's like Rails new dash JES build dash C bootstrap. So that'll also add it. It's just in this case, I didn't want to cover it uh, because it's sort of like a bit confusing for people. They think they might need to do that to make this work uh, for the device portion, but you really don't. So you can just grab those and paste them in here and this will largely work out of the box. And then at this point, we can go ahead and we can run some commands. So because we have the device and the simple form, we're going to do the setup by running a bundle install command. This will install device 4.9 right here we can see 4.9 alpha and right here it says uh, please review the change log and the upgrade guide if you're so inclined so i have those open we have the change log uh, over here which is effectively the upgrade log because it's it's pretty simple for an out of the box upgrade i don't know if it's more involved if you have like an existing suite or whatever Okay, uh, let's do this. We'll do a rails g device colon install command. That'll install device just like normal. We can then do a rails g device user command to create our user model. And then we can do a rails g simple underscore form colon install space dash dash bootstrap. That'll install bootstrap for us in our simple form. And uh, yeah, at this point, you're pretty much done. We can go ahead and run a uh, Rails G controller pages home and a Rails S. And we can come over to a uh, application over here. We can run the pending migrations by clicking the button. And now we do have to come into our config and our routes.rb and change this git to a root slash to a hash. And we should be good to go if we go to localhost port 3000. Now let's come up to our views, our pages, and our home page. And then in our home page, what we want to do is a quick check if we are the current user, if current underscore user, then we want to show that we are logged in. And then we also want to do a link to or a button to, it really doesn't matter. This is going to be your logout button, which takes you to your destroy user session path with data and this is going to be the turbo method colon colon delete and then we can go ahead and close this we can then do a else this is going to be a link to login and we can also do a link to the sign up if we'd like which will take us to the new user registration path so the difference here between uh the old method and the new method um at least like how you would do this in rails 6 would just be you'd have a method colon colon delete uh, you can still optionally keep this. It really doesn't matter. Uh, you would just put it right here and then you'd also have your data uh, turbo method delete right here. So that's kind of the only difference here. 
Now we don't have to create any of those extra controllers. So if we come over to our homepage and refresh, we can click sign up. I can sign up. Oops, uh, we have to stop our server. This is optional. Uh, if you're using simple form with Bootstrap, you do have to do a Rails G uh, device colon views command to generate the device views, which will generate it with those uh, styles for the Bootstrap. And now if we refresh, we get the Bootstrap stuff. So uh, we can do a Dean at example.com and then we'll just go ahead and we'll copy this. We'll paste it in for the password in the password confirmation. If we click sign up now, you'll see we don't get that error anymore. Our account is created and we can log out with this log out button that has that uh, data colon turbo method delete, right? If we log in, this will also work and we're good to go. So let's take a look at changing a legacy application to use this. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and CD out of our video. We're gonna do a Rails new, I'll call it legacy. We'll just do a bare bones app and we'll start it off with the uh, device 4.8. We'll generate it, we'll get it up and running and then we'll move over to device 4.9 or at least the alpha. Uh, so let's CD into our legacy do a bundle add for device because we don't need to add simple form for this. Go ahead and run that. And then we can do a rails g device colon install command. Then we can do a rails, oops, rails g device user command. We can then do a rails g controller pages home to generate our homepage. And we can do a rails db colon migrate just to set up our database real quick. Next, let's go ahead and let's, uh, well, we can just like nano into our config slash routes, or you can open this up in VS code. Really doesn't matter. We just want to change this, get to a root and the slash to a hash. Go ahead and save that. Uh, and then the other one that we have to change is the home page. I guess we probably want to just include all of this for that. We can just move into our app slash views slash pages slash home. Same deal in VS Code, you just want to paste this in and then save it. And we can go ahead and run a Rails S. It saves us from having to open up multiple VS Codes, right? So let's come over here. We can now click sign up. I'll sign up with test at case.com. Copy this and paste in the password and the password confirmation. If we click sign up, we get this error just like we did before. So that means that this is working with version 4.8. And again, if you go over to log in, you can now log in with that account. It's just the log uh, or the sign up button is kind of messed up. So let's change this. Let's go into our gem file and we want to change the uh, whatever it was, the device right here. We want this to match the uh, alpha branch, which we can get by just copying this. So now it has the device GitHub and the main branch in it, or you could change it to like 4.9 if you're watching this in the future. Let's go ahead and let's run a uh, bundle Again, that should pull it from that branch and we should see it change, which is right here. And now at this point, we can go ahead and run a Rails S again. And if we come over here and we refresh, we click sign up. Let's do Dean at example.com. Oops. And then we'll just go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it in for each of these. Now, if we click sign up, you can see our account gets created just like that because the process is effectively the same. Uh, the actual upgrade changes that they outline here are just for changing how the responders and the redirect status work because those are like expected uh, to have a specific type of behavior here, which you can add to your config initializers if you would like. Uh, you just come into your explorer, your config, your initializers, your device RB, and then in here, you're going to have your uh, responder. I don't know if they have a block for this already. So you can see here, uh, we have the comments already included. So when using device with Hotwire Turbo, the HTTP status for error responses and some redirects must match the following. Default and device for existing apps is 200 OK and 302 respectively, but new apps are generated with these new defaults that match Hotwire slash Turbo behavior. Uh, note, these might become new defaults in future versions of device. So because we've now updated, I think we are good to go here. Uh, as soon as you change these, it should then just work out of the box. But yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about was just uh, sort of what what's going on here. This is obviously now working. Uh, it is questionable to oops to run off of the uh, main branch of a gem when you're when you're working on something uh, because it'll change with each major release. But uh, I mean, device doesn't really get updated all that much. Uh, you're probably okay here. Like we can see here, it gets a pull request like once a month. Uh, so it's not like it's gonna be pushing breaking changes all the time, 
but also, you know, it is your user accounts. So you might want to be a bit more secure than that and make sure you stay on a specific version. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this helps you uh, not have to do that awful workaround all the time. Uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.